Okay, all right. Um, let's do a quick demo on uh, using the software uh, Deep Soil here for site response analysis uh, in geotechnical engineering. Uh, when you open the software, you will see a uh, this a page like this. Uh, first, you select the analyze uh, method. Uh, move from as simple as linear to uh, very complicated uh, scenarios for nonlinear analysis. Uh, today, we uh, we will do a demos on the equivalence linear. So we force you to do uh, your solutions in a frequency domain and we stay with the default uh, soil models uh, options uh, using the general uh, quadratic uh, models and also the non-Masons uh, models uh, for unloading and reloading for the soil which is the business loop. Uh, I recommend we use, uh, we turn off the automate uh, profile generation so you have more controls uh, on the uh, modulus uh, reduction curve and the damping ratios curve. Uh, we stay with metric for this uh, examples and since we select a uh, equivalence, so here you will force you to, to stay with uh, equivalence analysis uh, with the frequency domain. And next uh, we will do a uh, Profiles on the a uh, on the profiles on the a uh, inputting the soil profiles uh, right here, and I have a very very simplified uh, soil profile here uh, for demonstrations purpose. So it's just like a two layers on top of the bedrock, uh, sand materials on top of the clay, uh, and the water tables. Uh, right in between the two layers. So very simplified models, uh, soil profile for uh, educational purpose. Uh, so as you see here now, um, we have in the software, we have like a one back rock right there. And uh, pretty much like a by default, uh, it has a one soil layer and one back rock. And we are not seeing the soil layer here because uh, we don't have the thickness. So if we say a thickness, then you know you then the soil layers will come out, uh, and we need to add another extra layer here. So uh, we add a layer uh, uh, below the first one, and uh, we will say the water tables. Uh, we add the second layers. Uh, so now, uh, if you click on the, the buttons here, uh, we go to the topmost. We have the layer one. Uh, we have the layer two, which uh, we can define a thickness here now. So pretty much like uh, the plot here matching what we have uh, on uh, on the left. So you have layer one for the sand and layer two for the clay. Uh, here now we can uh, input the details and also with the water tables on top of the second layer. So for layer one, layer two, and the bedrock. And layer one, we can create the sand layer. Uh, it has a thickness of 15 uh, meter and the unit weight uh, is 12. Uh, shear rate velocity is uh, 300 and it automated, uh, automatically calculate the effective stress at the midpoint of the layer points right there. And the shear strength, uh, let's say it's 250 kilopascal. Uh, and we want to assign a uh, modulus uh, reduction curve uh, for this sand layer. So we go on this tab, so we see the reference curve. Uh, so you see we have like a different type of uh, options here. Uh, so actually there's like a three, sand, clay, and uh, user defines. So for the case that for your uh, for for your projects, like uh, for if this is for professional use, uh, if you have your own projects, uh, you do your lab testing, field testing, you got a user defined uh, curve based on laboratory results and uh, field testing like console or downhole uh, Few measurements uh, for a shear rate of velocity getting the G max, then we should we should we should use the user defined. But now here, uh, let's see the sand curve. Uh, we have a couple options. Uh, uh, we have the uh, the early days like uh, developments from certain interests uh, for uh, clean sands. Uh, so we have the upper uh, average and lower uh, curve. So when you select down, pretty much like a the curve. As a reference, uh, you will uh, automatically uh, pop out. So those uh, the the red line right here represent the reference curve. But this is not the one that you're going to use. Uh, you need to do some curve feedings and input parameters on this table. 
So that's this uh, what happened when you select at the very beginning of the first the very first page. You select that like uh, you are not generating uh, automatic automatic profiles. Uh, so uh, here, like you know, you have the uh, controls how to do the curve feedings. Okay. So uh, here, uh, let's say for the example, so we choose the uh, the lower bound uh, C curve for our uh, relatively weak sand layer here. Uh, so those are the curve uh, parameters. Uh, but if you select uh, something else, like the more advanced one, uh, the, uh, the month 2003, then you need to input corresponding uh, parameters, the like K0, uh, D50, and C sub U. Uh, uh, so C sub U and D50, those uh, are, are grains size of parameters that you can get it out from the uh, get them out from the uh, green side distributions curve uh, k naught is the advanced uh, earth uh, coefficients uh, usually it's point, uh, point, point 0.5 uh, the range of point 0.5 to point 0.6 uh, for lonely consolidated soil uh, and if you select other ones like the uh, uh, Darren Daly 2001 and uh, pretty much like uh, you have the capability to put on like uh, OCR and K0 and the PI. So if you have uh, uh, material sand with fines, so maybe this is a, a better one in the way that you have, you can uh, modify your uh, curve based on uh, laboratory uh, index po uh, properties that you can measure in the laboratory, typical geotechnical testings. Uh, but for Today, for the uh, demos, uh, we select the clean sand curve, uh, just 1970 and lower bound. And uh, you have a, uh, so this is a reference, and uh, uh, the, the window here below says, uh, give you the, uh, the preference on how to do the curve readings, getting those uh, curve. So you can either use the UIUC method or the uh, Dari Delhi methods. So let's try this one today, and then you use like a, a feedings, and there's some uh, curve feeding parameters that you can you can play with. Uh, today we just use the default uh, numbers. Okay, okay, and you this is the, the curve uh, feeding parameters as a results as a results, uh, and you see how like uh, the curve uh, the curve feeding me uh, feeding the reference curve. And uh, if needed, like, uh, you can, uh, make changes, uh, when needed. Uh, if you use a UIUC, uh, you will have, like, uh, similar, uh, feedings. So, uh, and again, the parameters come up, uh, from there. So let's, let's go with the UIUC for today and, uh, let's see, uh, how the results look like. And, uh, now, like, you can copy the, uh, parameters that you get from the curve readings to the uh, your soil models, so the D mean, and then you have the theta 1, you have the theta 2, so on, so on. And also those are the UIUC parameters. And after you plot it, you see the green lines come out. Uh, since we use exactly the same parameters from a uh, uh, curve feeding results, so it's the green is exactly on top of the blue. And the green uh, curve is the one that you will implement in this like uh, sexual response analysis. So we finish the clay layer, and then we can go to, uh, sorry, we finish sand layer, then we can move on to the uh, next step for the clay layer. So this is the clay layer. And uh, it has a unit rate of 15, um, she rate velocity of uh, 800, the soil strength of 550, and this is a clay curve, a clay layer, so we, we look for those like clay curve. Uh, we can use, uh, well, there's different model ways there, um, and I highly recommend you go back to the reference menu, so the original paper. Uh, to look at how those uh, parameters work and uh, uh, turn, uh, look for all the details on um, um, how to implement those models. So today we pick, we pick the uh, the basic one uh, as a demos. Uh, we use the Wilson and Dobie uh, curve. Uh, it asks you the PI 
and let's assume the PI uh, in this uh, participant index uh, for this particular soil layer is 10. Um, so we assume it here, but uh, back to your assignments or your uh, projects, uh, make sure you use uh, corresponding laboratory uh, measurements or uh, what uh, the information is given to you. So uh, we can, uh, very similar, we can see, we, next we do the uh, curve feedings too, and we will use the UIC methods, uh, the parameters here, and uh, those are the results. And this time we see the, the feedings uh, work very well with the, uh, uh, with the reference curve. So we can bring in the parameters right here, um, for this case, The three parameters, parameters. Okay, so pretty much we finished the uh, uh, the soil layers, and then the, uh, we uh, but it's not done yet. So we still need to move on to take care of the rock layer. Uh, first of all, the back rock layer uh, we need to define uh, whether we uh, this uh, we stay with the elastic half space or we just half space. So uh, you will select el elastic uh, half space uh, if your motions, uh, outcrops motions are being used. And you will select the other one uh, if the, uh, you use within motions. Um, and if you, it happens you do the elastic uh, options, elastic half space, you also need to input the rock uh, information, so shear rate, the unit rates, and also the damping ratios for your rock. And uh, if you use the richest house space for within motions, then uh, you can move on to the uh, next steps. So uh, we want to have to look at the information at the back, uh, the back walk level. So we will uh, do the uh, the convolutions uh, for two days. And um, uh, this is within motions. So that's uh, assumes like uh, uh, we look at also look at the motion recorded at the top of the first layers. Okay. Then we could check that uh, if everything uh, after this point everything is being successful uh, you should they should allow you to sound to save your profile so at this point I recommend you save your profile in case like anything like uh, uh, happens uh, when you really want the earthquake ground motions and also uh, if the program crash uh, during the analysis you can get back to this point okay so after that you can have an ideas on uh, how everything looks like in terms of profiles. Look at check the shear wave, uh, frequency, the damping, the soil strength uh, in terms of uh, uh, profile depth. The next is uh, where you uh, can start to uh, input your earthquake ground motions. And this program, it has a couple of uh, motions uh, that being there. Uh, the, those uh, famous class histories, earthquakes, like the Jolly ones. The Chichi uh, Taiwanese earthquakes, uh, the North Bridge, uh, and you have the capabilities to uh, add uh, new motions for your particular like, uh, projects. So you can download uh, ground motions from the peer uh, Berkeley website, so the NGA database, or any like uh, ground motions that uh, you pu uh, publicly available online. You can download it. Uh, so you can add new motions, and you can choose your files. Uh, for example, I have some uh, files uh, with uh, Dino from the uh, NGA database. So, for example, here uh, we have some ground motions download from the NGA websites. Uh, those uh, Greece earthquake uh, records right there. Uh, we select it. And then you ask you uh, where is the first line uh, start reading, read, reading the accelerations uh, uh, records uh, and where is the last line. So uh, quite handy that they uh, number it for you. So we know it's from line number 5 to uh, 1,843. So uh, this is accelerations uh, records uh, only for this one. And uh, the time steps also usually labeled on the record is uh, pointed to uh, 
seconds. So I'll make sure this uh, point two two point zero zero two four seconds uh, is also right there. Uh, you can put as the time steps, and then you can convert that. Uh, I've already have this motion, so we ask it to uh, whether you want to remove, uh, uh, replace it, and uh, pretty much uh, you will happen on this on the library. So when you click on it, then you see uh, how the motions look like. Uh, we can select uh, uh, a few ground motions for the examples. Uh, so you can run like a uh, several like a uh, ground motion time history per um, sex response analysis. So you select the ground motions that you want to work on, and then you go next. Uh, now uh, you ask you uh, where's the output you want to look at. Uh, you can either just look at the ground uh, right on top, or you look at all different layers. So at all different layers, uh, uh, or a particular depth, uh, um, you can see the uh, how the uh, your input ground motion is being amplified or deamplified. It. And uh, we select the uh, the default values uh, for the uh, other options, and then we can start analyzing the results. So after this is uh, being done, so you see like uh, uh, those are the uh, response that you got at the uh, particular layers that you're looking at. So this is sand layers, those are the response. And if you just want to kick one motions, uh, those that is the particular motions that you're looking at. The Kojali's, uh, the Greece uh, earthquakes that uh, uh, we, we input, and this is on the sand layers, and you want to see how it looks like on the clay layer. So compare with the sand layer and the clay layers, we were able to see how the motion sphere um, amplified on a, a time scales, on a uh, acceleration time history. Uh, and also compare with the motions uh, at the back walk levels to your uh, sand uh, on the ground surface. So you see how much like uh, the, the motion is being amplified. And you can also look at it as a uh, response spectrums uh, so you can kind of PGA at time you can see right there. Uh, you compare at the uh, at the at the rock at at the uh, also at the uh, ground surface, the top of the sand level, and then you can also look at what happens uh, at the middle layer, at the clay level. And um, you also have the uh, the options that are able to export uh, the informations uh, as a spreadsheet based on the ground motions that. Uh, uh, you want to investigate, you can select all of them if you want. And then like uh, you can export it the way that you want to, uh, the files that, that where you want it to be. And then you have the results right there. The, the spare heat then you will see like uh, the results you, you start with the input motions and lay up the first layer the second layer and the top of the rock uh, you will see like uh, uh, all the uh, several time history uh, velocity and also uh, with, respect, with, with respect with time and also with respect with uh, uh, the natural periods and also the frequency so the information saving so here's a quick demos uh, on using uh, deep soils. Um, I hope you uh, this information has helped you. Uh, please, uh, if you like uh, this contents, uh, please uh, like and share the videos and uh, comments uh, with your feedbacks. Um, thank you for watching.